Welcome to In Generation Project Rebroadcast Podcast of Daily Excellence, podcast number 42. Pastor Paul Begley, Eschatology reports amidst internal and external uncertainties with Mike of COT. It is our opinion our speaker Michael from Council of Time is recognized as one of the most influential Christian apologists of our time, and we are fortunate to have his insights and teachings available to us. Discover the insightful teachings from Mike at COG by visiting Council of Time's only official website provided in the description. Now, before we delve into the rebroadcast of Pastor Paul Begley Eschatology Reports Amidst Internal and External Uncertainties with Mike of COT, podcast episode number 42, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe for daily excellence in your life. These Council of Time rebroadcast podcasts are posted daily on our channel. Our YouTube channel and Generation Project began with one objective, to disseminate God's holy word across the nations. We are thankful for viewers like you whose support drives us to do so each day. Additionally, we value your continued support in helping us sustain our efforts. As you know, creating these videos in our recovery series requires significant time and overhead costs. Therefore, we've decided to start a Patreon to help cover some of these expenses. If you enjoy what we do and want to support us, check out the link in the description. Thanks not just for being part of our community, but being part of our story. Now, let's get into today's message. Pastor Paul Begley Eschatology reports amidst internal and external uncertainties with Mike from COT. We broadcast podcast number 42. Okay, peace out, and peace be with you, family. Blessings. And joining us right now from somewhere around this globe is Mike from around the world. Mike, how you doing tonight? Pastor Paul, God bless you this evening. (laughs) God bless you. Oh, Mike. Okay, so the title of the broadcast is Total Darkness, and it's not that, uh, you know, I mean, I think we're we're in the dark. I think the American public is in the dark. Yeah, I agree. Can we start with... I do agree. We got a lot of going on, but can we start first with maybe... Let's go to Haiti. Let's start with Haiti. All right. Okay. This almost looks to me, the Haitian president had to leave, and he thought he went to Kenya, was going to get support to bring over troops and going to shore up his nation. While he was gone, all hell broke loose. They turned loose two full prisons full of prisoners. The gangs are running over the nation. (laughs) And he thought he was going to fly from Kenya to America, but the Americans said, no, 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 go stop in the Dominican Republic. And when his plane was going there, they said, no, 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 (laughs) go to Puerto Rico. Uh, Is this a CIA operation? And my next question is, and Heidi wanted to ask this question, are we about ready? We've already seen California border overrun with immigrants from China and other parts of the world. We've already seen Texas and Arizona being overrun from all over the world. But Florida has been kind of holding its own. Is Florida getting ready to get hit with thousands, hundreds of thousands of Haitians in this chaos? So look, start with Haiti. Well, that country is uh, that country is in bad shape. It's been in bad shape for a long time. And it's not really been operated uh, by the government, but more by gangs and uh, ruthless individuals. And so that's one of those uh, ex-nations, I guess you could say. Yep. Yeah, so they kind of they kind of let that go. That's why they don't uh, they don't really cover it. Um, however, it does provide a good training ground or, or a crucible of sorts for uh, operations, and it is a comms port uh, for many many different armies. Really? It is and, really? and navies. Yeah, yeah, it is a comms port. Most nations that go kaput, they already know the landmass. Nobody's gonna really go into the landmass and 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 occupy too long and so what they normally do is set up comports outside in the waters of those places which are relatively safe to run and they do that quite a bit and they have operations and training in real time Uh, but they have let that country go it's a sad thing to see but um that there it is how much u.s involvement uh is there in haiti well it's uh, Last year, Haiti was absolutely uh, in, in shambles last year, right? It, they always seem to shore up the places that are most obvious, but as a whole, that country has fallen. 
It, it, in fact, it's been in a fallen state for about 15 years. And um, the U.S. has operations in every country, every yeah. single country yeah. except yes. Russia. So it is it's just one of those places uh, that is occupied by more than the U.S., obviously. Um, and there are some strategic locations there that nobody can really get to. It's invaluable. Normally, when they don't talk about a place, it is important uh, with one respect. It's a tactical location, right? But Haiti is uh, also very geologically unstable, and uh, lots of people know that. So you really can't, um, they really don't want to set anything up there permanently. They can't pull out. So do we have assets in Haiti? Yes. Um, do other nations want Haiti? Yes. Russia wants it right now. And um, China has always had some sort of involvement with Haiti due to its location, that strategic location. So as far as importance, that's what it offers. And there are a couple of, well, resources in Haiti, right? But uh, for the most part, they, you know, nations have allowed that nation to really crumble. There's a statement by the U.S. State Department spokesperson, Matthew Miller. <clears throat> he said the United States is not calling on President Henry or pushing him to resign, but added that we are urging him to expedite the transition to an empowered and inclusive government's structure to prepare for a multinational security mission in the there you are. Okay, and new elections. I can't. There you are. Okay, so, yeah, they're trying to figure out a way, I guess, to stabilize it with somebody. Well, to make sure that their assets, right, the assets that they have in that nation uh, are okay. It's what they're doing before they go in there and do something about it. But for the most part, the majority of that country has fallen. Yeah. It truly yeah. is fallen. Yeah. All yeah. right, let's talk about some more darkness. Uh, the, the, the governor of New York. Uh, decided, you know, the crime was getting out of hand in the subway, and so she just deployed for 750 National Guard troops along with 250 New York State police officers into the subways. They are patting down uh, citizens. They are scanning them, and they are going through their bags and backpacks and purses and what have you. The people wanted some kind of security because it was out of control, but now feel like they are the ones being violated. Uh, I guess my question is, after all the lawlessness that we've seen went on in New York, up, up on the street, running in, the shoplifters, the gangs, the riots, the the tearing, the burning down, the breaking the glass, the shutting down the bridges, with no, now we're going to uh, go here the day after Super Tuesday. What's your thought on that? Is that is that, was that just an accident? Or <laughs> Let me give you an update. Okay. Let me give you an update. Okay. First of all, everybody knows about Israel and Hamas. Yes. A lot of people know that uh, New York has a lot of uh, folks there from both places uh, who have been involved in protests. Yes. What you may not know is that those protests have cost the lives of quite a few. As of late, they're being threats, credible threats, not, not from individuals, but from organizations. And the last threat that was given is, in fact, a response from the governor to protect that city. That was a mandate that was coordinated on a national level. Okay. New York is not the only place. People will see a type of sweep. Uh, um, they're trying to make it as nonchalant as possible. The threat is enormous. The threat is real, and it's not some joke. So that means I, I, I just I can't help but to see they're going to fail. Who's gonna they're fail? not going to find. Well, the the you can't call up National Guard to snip out anything. No. Right? They're trying to catch a specific group. National Guard is unqualified to do that. Right? I just can't help but to think they're going to fail. Whatever cover story they have, they're probably doing. Uh, because of the optics with President Trump and, and how that looks, you know, they don't want that tied together. The truth is, many cities have a legitimate problem, an immediate problem. And unfortunately, due to a political climate, they're not able to really communicate that to people and call it, they'll cause, uh, you know, that'll cause big chaos. But uh, again, I just don't think they're going to find it. 
you're not going to find what they're looking for in time. So what you're saying is this, this get used, are you saying get used to this because it must, might be coming to every city in America? We have Hamas sensitive operatives in the USA who have threatened this country yep. legitimately, right? Yep. And uh, they have the means to do exactly what they want to do. Uh, a small example of that, if they deployed chemical weapons in New York, everybody there would be infected in less than about four hours. If you if they launch that in the subways, nobody escapes, right? That's what that's what's so dangerous. Wow. Those subways go all throughout the city. You uh, you deploy one in one location, it's going to carry it through the ventilation system. It's going to carry it all throughout the city, and that's a big problem. I just don't think they're going to find what they're looking for in time. And that's a that's a so very saying, uh, recent threat. This is not just about trying to cut down on some of the the mugging and 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 and, and some no. of the crime small crime i don't call it small crime when people get stabbed or so you know, yeah, you know what i'm saying yeah. but this isn't really about that this is about sweeping looking for biological weapons maybe well looking for groups that are they're going to do something yeah, um, terrorists. and and i they're just not we're, we're talking some folks who are think of it as um part of the Middle Eastern elite forces, right? Comparable to our Delta operators. Yep. Equal to uh, the Mossad and um, Iranian elite forces. Uh, you know, those type folks are in this nation. Uh, I would I would estimate maybe a eight hundred thousand, maybe, <laughs> with their families and everything else. But they do not mean the USA good, right? And uh, they have been communicating. A lot. Communication has been off the scales and they are planning their positioning. And so they can't really tell everybody why the, the, the real reason they're doing this. But there, there's trouble here in the USA. Big trouble. And if President Trump, see, the more President Trump looks more likely to be elected, the faster they're going to have to uh, do what they have to do. Because they know that President Trump is not going to make friends with Hamas. No. They already know that. No. And so he is a big threat to them. They plan to exterminate as many cities as they can prior to, uh, you know, his election. And they're not just, you know, they're not playing games. Israel was first. Yes. We follow. Well, they're working on us now. Not, yes. They're not going to work on us. They're working on us now. They're getting their plan together now within the USA. So we, we just had Mark, Pastor Mark Bilsa before you, and, and he, he was just saying that uh, and he just wrote a book. Uh, it's coming out in a couple of weeks. He said it's called America at War in 2024 through 2026. And he said, um, Paul, you're going to see suicide bombers in America, in our major cities. You're going to see because the people who do those, that mentality, the people who do these things are here. And they're getting ready to turn it they are. wide open. Do you fear they that are. as well, Mike? Do you see that as well? Sure. When you have folks who have the capability now, it's not like it used to be. Uh, back in the day, uh, somebody could set off a dirty bomb. That was the biggest word, right? Forget yeah. about a dirty bomb. Forget about that. They have access to corporations, equipment, nuclear facilities. Um, they have access to lots of things. And one of the biggest problems is you don't know who's loyal to what. Uh, there are devices that can fit inside of a cell phone and level New York City, right? It can be the size of an iPhone, and it will level New York City. All the components have to do is be put together. They're about the size of an iPhone, and they will level New York City. These are some of the reactions that they have uh, actually perfected over the years, make a dirty bomb look like a firecracker. And these guys have that technology, right? Anything we have, they potentially have, and that is a big problem. We know we have missing sensitive items here in the USA. They're gone. We don't know where they are. You remember all those uh, uh, derailments? You remember the cargo some of these trains yes. had yes. where the um, uh, whatever was in them would go missing. You know, certain volatile chemicals are gone. And, you know, they suspect who's behind it. So we have a big problem, a big problem. All cities are going to undergo what New York City is undergoing. And it's, it's going to, I, I, I wouldn't, it would not surprise me 
And it's a sad thing to say. It wouldn't surprise me if every city was already triggered, wired and ready to go. It would not surprise me. So we're going to see more of these uh, National Guard uh, troops, maybe even maybe even active. They'll be federalized. All this stuff is going to be federalized. The cat's going to be out of the bag, right? Uh, It's it's just not a it's not a good thing. So anyway, that is that's what we face right now. That is a very, very real issue. The president's giving the State of the Union address right now, Mike. I checked with Heidi a minute ago. She was not too too thrilled. Um, The president is wearing a, a pin. It's the United States flag. And Mike Johnson, the, sec- the uh, Speaker of the House, is wearing the exact same flag. But the Vice President's wearing a different kind of a flag pin. I don't know what it is. I haven't ever seen it before. I don't know what. I- Maybe it's just I'm getting a bad angle on it. Is there some other kind of flag? That the Vice is it President- slimmer than what their flags look no, like? No, no. It's, it's bigger. And it, I don't know. Maybe it's two different flags flying in two different. I, I'm not sure. It's different. Stuff. Normally. Normally she wears a it's a she wears a flag that's gold, white, and silver. Normally it's a bit it's a bit slimmer. Uh, the flag is slimmer than uh, the rest of the um, congressional flags, right? And a bit longer, and so that may be throwing you off. So it's highly yeah. reflective, yeah, right? It's, it's highly reflective. reflective. I think that's yes. uh, yeah, that that's why. Okay. I think the president and and everybody else they have the uh, the actual flags with the colors in it. Hers is just uh, gold and silver. Is, is quite thin so okay nothing nothing to see there i, I take it then i uh, won't worry um yeah because you always worry about these things is somebody sending a message you know is there a is there a subliminal message being sent like when nancy pelosi just took president trump's last state of the union streets and just tore it up in front of everybody i think that was sending a message that uh <laughs> She didn't really care much for it. I tell you what, that's a sad, that's a very sad state of the union. Folks, and the President Biden is, you, you know, in the scriptures when it says uh, the, 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 the spirit is willing, right? Right. But the body is weak. Well, in his case, his mind is willing, but his body is not catching up. It's just not doing it. It's, not, it's, a, it's, sad. A, it's a very sad thing to see. It's going to drop confidence. In, in you know people voting for him is just not going to happen. And plus, it, it medically, medically, I can't help but to see premature signs of an aneurysm. Wow, wow. We got to so we got to really pray for him and and keep an eye on him at the same time. Yeah, because he's not he's pushing himself, and that's not going to yeah a lot of stress. That's just not going to bode well. No, I got a question for you, Mike. The Red Sea. Yes, sir. They say that the cable, the internet cable network or cable that runs under the Red Sea was cut. Do you know anything about that? I wasn't the only one. Okay. Um, All oh right. My. Okay. Help they, us. Help us know what's going on here. People are active, Pastor Paul. But, you know, it's a very real possibility that within a very short time, uh, we could see some large scale retaliation from some of the Middle Eastern uh, folks there. That's a very real possibility. I mean, very real. There are too many too many uh, things like that happening, uh, too many things being transported from Iran all over the Middle East. Saudi Arabia is not exactly honest. It's becoming dangerous. People have died uh, from, from, you know, having the wrong alliances. American News does not cover that. They're not going to cover that. And uh, we have a worsening situation in the Middle East. Our guys are stressed on every side, right? They're being overtasked, yeah. especially uh, especially uh, uh, special operations command. They're just overburdened in, in so many different places. They are deployed. It's getting worse. It's getting worse. It, it's taxing us more and more and more. So uh, things are not stable at all. They may appear to be, uh, but they're not. They're not. They're not showing what's actually happening. They're just not showing. Um, another. We got a lot of questions. You know, we ask people if they want to ask questions for Mike. Let us know. Um, there's a question that came in. I thought it was a pretty interesting one. D- uh, there was a, a Dimitri Dudeman, who was a great uh, prophet of the Lord. He came from Romania. They executed. They, they literally electrocuted him twice, and he didn't die. So they 
then the judges who sentenced him fell dead. And so they said, let's just get him out of here. So he came to America, and he had a vision in which he saw a communist revolution here in America. He saw a communist revolution taking over America. Your thoughts on that? And is that? And, and someone said, and could that be linked somehow to the stone steps? Well, the stone steps looks to be taking shape right now as we speak yeah, um, yeah. with all of what's happening, unfortunately, especially with the division of the people. As far as this gentleman you spoke about, Dimitri Dudeman, now, personally, I'm not familiar with that. Uh, but I would say this, the ideology of communism, right? Believe it or not, when people become hardened, I mean, really hardened, <clears throat> isn't that, in fact, not democracy, but communism, isn't it? Wouldn't it be communism to usurp an entire republic, right? Oh, sure. And to, and to take away uh, the democratic values and then install some sort of a, a jousting match and then the winner of that out the winner of that match then dictates what's what that's exactly what we're living in it's not like it's coming it's here and it's growing you know th there will wow. come a time where they're going to have to suspend uh, these democratic ideologies not because somebody's evil in office but because the people are ripped to pieces now, you know i often think past well how do the people re recover from what we're going through politically. Mm -hmm. How's that going to happen, mm. right? Because political sides, they can't do that, right? They can't do that. Uh, there's going to have to be a third component that will come in and under under a council of sorts, they're going to have to, uh, you know, initiate something where people can actually repair. The damage is almost irreparable at this point. Are you surprised at the, at the unbelievable sweeping of super tuesday by president trump and the amount he's the no. most, are you surprised at the rallying around him with all of these i mean all of these indictments all of these trials all of these things it do you feel no. that's a phenomenon or is that just what the people are sick and tired of what they're seeing and the people do not well in their minds and in 70 million americans the government in the united states right is just not there Right. Right. And in their hearts and minds, they feel if they don't, if they don't do something. See, I guess this is where understanding comes in. When people feel like they have lost their home, mm. they have to fight to keep it. Right. Yeah. Now they're going to do what they think is right in their own minds to do what they have to do. And so is the so are the other people with the other people. They think that what they've been trying to establish is being blockaded by Republicans, right, that somehow Republicans are, are stormtroopers that do not want, you know, democracy to <laughs> flow. The problem is they're more concerned about themselves being right, right, than, than ever actually looking at the people. Even right now, right now more than ever, we need governance, real governance. We really do. That's not going to come from, uh, well, it's not going to come from the Democratic Party, unfortunately. They are totally taken over by anger and if the republican party is not careful right they're going to also be taken over by anger from the outside coming in they will they most you know, certainly you will you know it's happening slowly but surely and it's a sad thing to see it is matter of fact heidi said and i would just i just saw it she said paul i said how's it going she said anger the president is angry yep. and then the republicans are shouting back at him and he's shouting back that's at them. no good i mean that's no good uh, th That's they're no shouting good. at him, and he's shouting back at them, and they're shouting back at him. This is not good. This, And the people are going to replicate that on a personal basis, and people do not have that type of restraint. They don't. Because a person, right, if you feel that you're, somebody's going to come and take your property and that they are, you know, um, that they're communists or something like that, that seems to be the label that everybody sees everybody as. Yeah. You're going to do everything you can to protect your family. And when you call civilians to be put in that mindset, they have to protect their families and to protect their country. They're going to find everybody who does not agree with them, right? Yeah. And this is what we see happening, and this is growing. This is actually beginning to overwhelm all the mechanisms um, of politics that they would usually use. Now, guaranteed, Pashball guaranteed, our entire political process 
is going to be challenged by something external. And in fact, if God doesn't do something soon, right, it's going to be carnage in this country. Carnage. Absolute carnage. I, I'm afraid you're right. And I know you're not speaking uh, off just, you know, in the wind. I know you you are very calculated, very careful with your wording. And you're right. I think you're exactly right. And I think I heard that from Mark Biltz earlier, and I'm hearing that from you now. And I think that most of the American public sense it. We don't want it. There ain't nobody that wants this. Nobody wants this. But it's like you have no other choice. It's There's a, there's a battle going on. Uh, that's uh, let's talk. Uh, speaking of battle and things that are happening, you mentioned the forty days. I don't want to keep belaboring that, but when I ask people, give me what question you have for Mike, they're saying, "Can ask Mike, was he meaning that the that possibly Gog and Magog was going to start in those forty days? Like the forty days, from I understand, Mike is March twenty ninth or thirtieth, right there at the end of March. Is there something that you know that is it has something to do with this political arrangement or or uh, is it something to do with warfare, uh, terrorism? Is there is there any idea you can give us on something big coming? Think of it as a time where it would really pay people to be uh, to really sit down, right, and to be ready, to really be ready uh, internally, externally, be ready before that time these moments that we have right now are quite uh, we have a lot of freedom to enjoy we have a lot of leisure to enjoy right, right. and uh, i think it is a time it, this span of time is a good prep time for people to really soberly make sure they're prepared you fit you, you said is this an american thing or is this a global thing well um it seems, you know, this day and age, everything seems to be global basketball. Everything is interconnected. But as Americans in particular, they might want to be ready. All right. I mean, really ready, really prepared. Spiritually, you need to get your heart right. Mentally, you need to prepare yourself for just about anything that could happen and, and not be shocked when it does. Is that what I'm hearing you say? Yeah, be ready because uh, we're going to face some severe challenges. This year is not going to be like any other year, and uh, it's going to be tasking, very tasking. The Republic's survival, I think, is on the line. Am I right? Yeah, it is in more ways than one. That's one element of it, Pascal, but think about something else. Texas has had these fires. Yes. And, of course, people speculate as to the source of these fires, but, folks, these fires are only beginning. Summer is not here yet. And the conditions of the lands, it's going to get worse. It's going to get a lot worse. You called this. These Mike. fires are going to be bad. You know, you told us three weeks before the fire started, you said you might want to keep an eye on Texas. There are uh, fires. And, and there was no there was no really no indication why in the world you would say that other than you might have known and you probably knew that the, the dryness – uh, was setting up for a potential that would be bad if it caught on fire. I mean, I, I, I guess it's amazing you called that three weeks in advance, but it, it's happened for sure. It's the worst fire in Texas history, and there's I, they really they don't have a handle on this. It's fifteen percent contained. It's not under control. Yeah, it's spreading. No doubt they'll have uh, red flag events uh, throughout the year, and I hope that people are flexible, ready really prepared because the conditions in the USA are, are pretty bad. Plus, uh, we could entertain a jet stream reversal at the end of this year, which is not going to help matters any, because that will dry out the entirety what? of the East Coast. Are you saying the jet stream always coming from the West to the East? You're saying it might just actually shift and go back the other way? Yeah. Yep. During the Dust Bowl. You yeah. remember that? The yeah. Great Dust Bowl? Yes, yeah. The same thing happened. Same thing happened. And, and it just, you know, made that situation unlivable, right? We're about to see that again. The exact same patterns are happening again. And with some of these external influences, uh, you know, bearing down on the sun, we, there are no assurances here. There are none. Plus, we have another problem. Um, our, our magnetosphere is beginning to fluctuate a bit too much. Uh, the solar winds, right? Yep. They hit the bow shock and they are absorbed by the earth. You know, no big, no big deal. If the polarity 
of the of these magnetic field lines are reversed. We're not going to have a defense against the solar winds. The solar winds will become just like a solar flare. Think about that. Whoa. They'll do the same damage as a solar flare. That's that's a that's a game changer. I mean, whoa. Yeah. No, that's devastating. That will be devastating and because we'll have vitrification in places on the Earth again. We'll have iridium layers forming from high doses of radiation. It'll look like uh, you know some sort of bomb blew up in certain places, and that's what happens when the when those field lines of force begin to reverse. They'll go through a chaotic moment first, uh, which will let some radiation in and sporadic uh, heat anomalies on the surface of the Earth. Instant fires. Followed by, no! you know, the, the solar winds themselves would penetrate directly to the Earth's surface. As long as we're polarized, we can take we can take flares and CMEs. That's why nothing has damaged anything. I don't know right. why they won't share this with people. But during the Carrington event, they knew for a fact there was chaos in the magnetic field lines. The Earth could not absorb that that flare like it normally does. If that happens, <clears throat> we can't even absorb the solar winds. So I mean the wind. So it'll be bad. We could absolutely, if it if it reversed right now, right, we'd lose power all over the world. You're saying if this if our jet streams reverse, or if our solar poles reverse, we, we, the magnetic field fields, lines of force, right? If they if reverse, they reverse, we're done. I mean, we're not done. Our polarities. Right? That's right. Our polarities wrong. We're going to lose power, right? Power stations are going to be gone. Chips are going to be fried. Uh, through a continuous blast like that, an EMP shield is only going to last a maximum of 13 hours. That's if it's underground, right? Which is why China is digging into a mountain. Which is why uh, you got China, you got Japan doing the same thing. They're going to—they're they're obviously they're saying they're going to put a water tank in there as a neutrino detector, but. You don't you don't uh, spend no, that much money no. just to detect neutrinos. No, you have the same thing happening in Germany, right? Uh, the USA has two places. They've been doing the same thing. They just haven't shared it, and so they 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 suspect that we're going to lose. We're going to go through a chaotic moment with our uh, magnetic shielding. And in that case, we're going to. It's just not going to be good. It's not like everything is going to go out all at once. It'll be chaotic at first, right? Uh, folks won't be able to recover from that, and um, that, that's going to be be the beginning of uh, a very different era. But this is where we are, right? This is where we are. And folks who watch those magnetic field lines, hopefully they do so closely, because if they start going into a chaotic pattern, uh, the reversal is next. And if that happens, all those solar winds are going to penetrate through straight to the Earth's surface and get to every single you know, all the electronics we have and even us. Total darkness is not something we should think about lightly. I mean, you're, what you're talking about is some major effects on the on the electrical grids and our way of life. Nothing would, with, without the electrical grids, right. everything would shut down. There'd be no food, there'd be no water, there'd be no fuel, there'd be nothing moving. No sewage treatment. Nope. People that means would cholera would break out, yep, yeah, and cholera would break out. No, uh, it, it'd be a you know chain of events that would take place. That would be uh, be awful, be awful, and that we live, we have a, we're in a very delicate time, right? It, in fact, it'd be good for national prayer during this time, but Maybe. they're not going to do it. No, they they they're not going to do it because they, they can't quit to, fighting with each they're other. They're out of control, right? They're out of control. And unfortunately, that stuff is going to increase. But past Paul, we all knew this time was coming. We did. Right? We all knew we did. this time We've been was telling coming. everybody. We've been preaching about it. We've been reading about it in the Bible. We've been saying it. We've been on the air, you and I, for almost a dozen years talking about these things. But, Mike, remember, we first started, we talked about things coming. We're talking about what's happening now. It's happening now, isn't it? We're here. Yeah, it is. It is. It but, sure is. What about this, Mike? This was a question for you. King Charles is sick. We know he's sick. Yeah. I don't know how bad yet, but the, uh, you know, the 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 mon the monarch, uh, the 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 they never share their physical problems or if it relates to their health. This, this don't want to show the king being weak or sick. Is it is William being prepared now? Is it, do, it, have you heard anything about Prince William really getting himself ready to actually become the next king of England? I'm, well, as soon as uh. As soon as the dad stepped on the scene, right, 
That's when all the activities of the sons was altered. It changed. He came, he had more responsibility, right? He was seen more doing specific things. And um, I, I just don't trust the political ambitions or anything of these folks because of what I know they've done behind the curtain. Um, Whoa. How they how they bless things, how they knight things ah. in their their process of passing an anointing, so to speak, the worship of the dragon, the red dragon, uh, all these different things that they do. And so uh, because a young son is the red dragon, right? That's who he right, is, the red dragon. Right. That's, that's who they bow down and they actually bow down and worship these guys like that. They right? do. They so, do. Uh, there's, yes, there's certain do. kinds of ceremonies and underground yes. the, the, the oh, yes. rituals. That's... Oh, yes. All that stuff that people have heard of, like the Illuminati, the, the, the um, head of the Masonic temples and all that good stuff, all that is kept alive. All of it's kept alive. And they do initiate things like that. Even Queen Elizabeth, she went through her process of, of uh, anointing or first accepting responsibility taking all those oaths, right? And then pledging herself and her body and her soul and uh, um, in, in view of everybody, right? To the deeds of the dragon. What, what is that? What is that? Right? So they, they have they have all that stuff was documented. I think you can still find it on the internet. But, you know, it's like, it's like this thing that people say, oh, they just normally do that, right? So I'll say this. Christians, because they're familiar with the Bible, they're familiar with, uh, Satan, they sh- they would instantly identify certain uh, phrases that they use. But the average person in the world would just see that as some ritual that they do to accept responsibility over a nation. My goodness, all these things that are happening, it seems like they're specifically designed that only a true believer would be able to see them, and nobody else can. I I. Uh... I've studied and, and we've written about some of this in our book, Revelation 9-11, so I don't want to tell you what all that is, but it's there. And you'll see when we, when we dig into all the secret societies. But I'm hearing that even some of the rituals of the conception of the bearing of the next heir, there's there's yeah. there's uh, potential um, procedures that are yeah. in play. Yeah. Something to and witnesses and yes, not good. So, but, but there's never a witness, Pastor Paul. There's, there's even though even the woman, right, the vessel, the vessel will have no memory of certain things. They'll wow. be in a daze, right? That yeah. this always happens that way. They'll be in a daze, so they won't have a complete memory of it. Um, but you know, people have tried to. It, this is going to sound funny, but people have tried to warn people in subtle ways, right? You have rich people who have tried to warn the world when they saw it, they were flabbergasted. Not every person out there with money that's rich is terrible. Right. And they have tried to warn people, you know, they, so if it's, if uh, they try to warn the masses, normally that happens through a movie or movies. And then, uh, you know, people can see it from there, but these folks actually do those things. Right. Yeah. Now I won't go so far as a, some of the lizard stories I've heard and right. stuff like that. Right? right. I can't comment in that area anyway. But these rituals that, that they live for those things, they have them for everything. And they've been doing right? this for centuries too. I mean, it's not. And that's right. And they are immoral as they come. Wow. And you know, right now they're afraid that story is going to get out. Yeah. All of them are yeah. highly immoral. And when I say immoral, I mean immoral. Is Kate Middleton, uh, uh, Kate, uh, married to uh, Prince William? Is she? I mean, she's had surgery. She was a hospital father. Is she sick, or is there is there more to the story here? Or we, hopefully, she's not. But they're not going to tell anybody anything, uh, Pastor Paul. It's you know they're going to have their rituals. I think I well, obviously, it's more than what people thought it was. Right? You don't stay in the hospital that long just because you're sick or something like that with a small sickness anyway. Uh, so there's something's going on, right? Wow. Her, the mother dies. Uh, the, uh, the, the husband pops up and takes the, uh, or the, the, they start taking their roles as Kings and Queens. And then all of a sudden, uh, you know, some weird sickness hits somebody in the middle of uh, possibly passing down the uh, future of that kingdom to another heir. 
which may come about. And then all these other heirs start to pop up. These stories are popping up. So it's a mess. It's a mess. Look, it at, really look at Diana. She had to go. Diana had to go. I, she, right? they, she had to go. And she, she same was... thing will happen again. Same thing will happen again. Wow. This is going to happen again. Wow. We will keep the close eye on this, Mike. Uh, I appreciate you giving us a little bit of insight on this. Speaking of Great Britain, and let's talk about the United States. There's a there's a guy who's been watching me now since I started. His name's Vernon Hale. Vernon lives in Philadelphia. Uh, I got, had a chance to meet him once. He came where I was preaching somewhere in Pennsylvania, and he came. Um, he's been with me forever. And I, ha- I hadn't even heard from him in a long time, wondering if he was still alive, if he was still out there. Well, he is. And matter of fact, he sent a question tonight. He said, 42 months, um, Jerusalem will be trampled underfoot. He said, could you ask Mike, certainly something has to happen to the United States and to Great Britain. Does he have any idea what that could be that would allow the world to trample in the streets of Jerusalem for 42 months? And are we close to this? Yeah, well, if Jerusalem is trampled underfoot 40 and two months, the USA has to be effectively neutralized. Yeah. Neutralized. That wow. means we can't respond. That means we're locked. We can't do anything. So what can happen between, well, whatever has to happen can't happen overnight. No. Right? We cannot be neutralized overnight. So it must be horrific. Something that builds up. I personally believe it's going to start through people through a division right now you see governors starting to make their own moves right you're going to see a breakaway from the union is what you'll begin to see right that will be followed by whoa people are wait, going to be forced you just said we're to going take to, allegiances we're going to see governors breaking away from the union yeah yeah you will you and, will do you see that happening in the next 12 months oh yes eight months I, uh, well months? i there's talk of it right now Right. Yeah. There are meetings of it right now. I see that happening uh, is going to go along with this election. Pass ball. This election is so impactful. It is very impactful to a lot of people. It means that what we once had is over. Right. To other people, it means we're going to have to go. Uh, we're going to have to go You know, fully combative to restore to to get all the ticks out. This is what they're, they're willing to go to extremes to make their vision come to fruition. Yeah. Right. They're not going to back down and doing it either. Um, they're going to go forward and do what they have to do, do whatever they think they have to do. In the meanwhile, people are going to be torn apart by this. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, now, when people imagine. are torn apart, here, here's a bad part. When the civilians are torn apart, the military is going to come dysfunctional. A soldier cannot fight for democracy. That this no longer exists. If they lose hope in what they're fighting for, and this is why it's so sad to see what I'm seeing on television, in the news, it's a sad thing because it demoralizes uh, troops, right? It, it really does demoralize troops. A lot of people now are having issues with that. They have a loyalty to one side, but the other side is broken. No yeah. matter who wins, one side is going to be broken, period. It's going to be broken. And in order for them to go trample through some underfoot for 40 and two months, of course, that's in Daniel chapter 11. Uh, when they go into Jerusalem and set up the abomination of desolation. But even before that, they gained an army, you know, that that unholy alliance yes. did that. But America has to be effectively neutralized. We are the the really the only ally of Israel right now. Right. And even that's and on we're divided and we're divided. Right yeah, we are. And there's a principle in the Bible, which is. The Lord said a nation divided against a house divided against itself cannot shall not stand, shall not stand. That means that that's not a, you know, well, maybe it could happen. That's not a, you know, well, it may happen down the road. No, shall not stand me. That's a declarative statement. It shall not stand. So, um, well, there goes our, you know, that that's our future. But I still believe, here's what I believe. I believe that we're going to have to go through this shakeup. We are. Does it matter, then? It doesn't matter to, to this point. It it matters to everybody who wins the election. I understand it. But in a bigger picture, does it, it, it doesn't matter which one wins. Half the country That's right. is going That's right. to go off the rails. That's right. It's happening right now. It is. The, the folks, whoever wins this election... They're going to feel like, yes, we can do it now. 
but they're not going to realize how much opposition they faced. It, it, this is ripped this country into pieces. Oh my God. It really has. And from those pieces, we know the next rip we're going to see, we're going to see groups rise to power, right? Yep. There are groups right now. There's, there are what, 14 groups in America, large groups that are getting their, you know, presidents or their main spokesperson ready to go to Washington, right? With or without consent. Uh, this is happening on both sides. There are riots. There were riots and and uh, some demonstrations that that are happening right now in D.C. Right, that are not right. uh, they're not too good. No, right, they're not. And so our government will have to. F- our governmental structures, our secret meetings taking place right now, where governmental structures are being, uh, di- uh, for new countries, uh, new structural democracy. Or let's say communistic new charters. Yeah, new charters. New Some new charters. You better believe it. You better believe. Ready it. to People, go in case they, they need don't know. to. You better believe it. Well, it's going to be more just in case. They're going to force a brand new way of life. It'll be forced. This will coincide with a lot of geological turmoil. This is happening. This is not going to happen. This it's is already happening. in process. This is happening, right? This is happening. When they put Facebook up. And in Yahoo and all these different things, that was a feedback mechanism, right? Yeah. To give them the pulse of the people. They know exactly what moves people. They know exactly what to do to maneuver people into a position they want them in. This this fighting that you see is one thing, but the response of the people is a calculated thing. It really is. They're pushing people on either side. So in a situation like this, what you see is most people in their minds are saying, well, the government is broken. You remember. 10 years ago, I said, they're going to, they have to make this government appear like it's antiquated. It's broken. It does not work. And at that point, they're going to bring in a new type of governance. You remember that? That was was about 10 years ago, past fall, somewhere around there. But social media was a mechanism that they would get all the feedback from. How does Facebook continue to operate? Right. When their advertising was suspended for so long, <laughs> I don't how know do, how do all of these different companies continue to operate and they have no clear revenue. Right. Right. With or without with or without revenue, these guys were going to continue to operate. So it's government. They, they were started. Uh, yeah, of course. They, as, uh, why do you think Mark Zuckerberg? Right. Mark Zuckerberg. He's supposed to be this enemy of the government. But the right. government needs Mark Zuckerberg now. Yeah, they yeah. have joint programs that they've had going back 20 years, right? Yeah. They have uh, this meta, this metaverse. Yeah. People think that's only for civilians. Or are you kidding me? That is that is cutting edge technology, and the civilians get the leftovers, right? Right. While the military is going to use the engaging part of that. So all of this is being developed to go forward in a in a type of, or you could say, a type of nation you can't see. And then one day, the nation that everybody thinks is there, they're going to find out it never was there. You know, inside the metaverse, they say that's VR. No, this is VR. People are seeing exactly what they want them to see. So right? the government they trust in is 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 not there. The government most people know is non-existent. Have it because nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing is coming about from any government that we've had in the usa we've been on one steady track so when we say breakdown of what we had total darkness we're talking we could include in this total darkness a shadow government there's a shadow government that is running the show would you say oh yeah they've been running deep state shadow government that one of the greatest uh, go ahead one of the greatest tactics you were talking about the cia earlier right yeah the CIA has a job where they, they go in other countries and do things and make the other country believe that their own people did that. Yes, they do that all the time. So they yes. do their damage and come out, and the people start blaming each other. Does yes. that sound familiar? Yes. Does that sound familiar? It sounds that's like America. Right that's that America. Sound, that's what we have right now. So the yeah. same thing that's going to go on, we've been, we've been watching in Venezuela – or Colombia, happening here. or yeah. Haiti, or wherever we've seen it in Europe from time to time, whether it be happening Kosovo right or Serbia, yeah. it's happening right here. You got it. And it started with what? Their presidents. Yeah. It with did. elections. It is. Every, every time yep. it is. Yep. Yep. 
I, and people can't see this. No, people can't see it. We don't. And part of it is, Mike. To be honest, we don't want to see this. We just want to have a family and live peaceably and work and come home and and, 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 and and you know go to church on Sunday maybe and watch the ball game. We don't want nobody in this country. I don't think most people. I should say not not nobody, but most people. They just want to just be common people. Just want to live. All of this agenda that's being forced down our throats, it's coming from some type of uh, secret society or some type of dark shadow government that has, that's hell-bent on creating a new America, but not the America that we've known, but a dark, uh, godless America, a new world order. A, 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 not just America, but globally. This is a, a Illuminati or some type of satanic plan the beast of the bible is this what we're dealing with is this the beast of the bible that's coming to pass yeah they have to prepare his seat and in order for his seat to uh, really be a good seat right they have to degrade all other nations it is it, it should hit everybody's mind that look at the characters we have in leadership just take a good look oh. I, and the older folks you know the folks our age past ball we're not by i don't buy what i see I don't know. That's why I'm not invested no, I know. in, in I individuals know like this. I'm, I'm invested in prayer, not these individuals. Amen. Uh, President Joe Biden is clearly, he's clearly too old. Right, right. right, right. He, he may have it there in the brain and everything like that, but his, his body cannot keep up with his thoughts. No, right? no. And at some point, your agendas get diluted with other things. He drifted a few times during this State of the Union, right? Uh, I haven't seen it, but I would assume he probably did. Well, yeah, you guys are probably watching that. Oh, the, you've uh, already saw it before. The replay. We're, we're getting the replay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I forgot. You got access. To the, you saw it before you ever came on the air with me. <laughs> so but it was sad. It's, was it's it? very sad. Yeah. It's very sad. It, it, does no, it, it does not represent uh, anything good. It certainly doesn't add confidence to anything, right? So what I'm saying is that what we once knew, we knew – we, we project this image as though it still exists, and that's how they get you, right? right. If, if, if anything, right now, the Lord's children have to rise up the ecclesia of the church, because if we don't, uh, it's over. It, it really, what's going to stop any of these guys from doing anything? It's going to be over unless the ecclesia stands up, unless the church stands up. They have the authority in the earth, not those guys. Those guys are doing exactly what they're influenced to do. We're the only force that can stop it or slow it down. That's right. Because this, at its at its core, this is spiritual. Yeah. This is absolutely one hundred percent, and that's going to be painfully obvious as these months continue. That's going to be painfully obvious when people turn around and say, "I made a big mistake. I, I should have suspected this stuff was spiritual." Mike, a couple questions for you here. One guy yes, wants to know: Can you? We know you play piano, but can you sing? Can I sing? If I went to court, I'd sing like a bird. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it there. We know you can play piano. I'm just waiting to get to hear it. I yeah, would okay. not say. Oh, man, well, I dabble. You know, I dabble here and there. Okay. So I have a feeling. I just dabble. I have a feeling yeah, you can sing a little along with playing piano. Really looking forward to hearing that. I doubt if I could get through a song, though. Really? Why? You know how you're singing a song and you actually hear the song and you can't complete the yeah, song? You That's break, what happens. Yeah, emotion, you get emotional. Yeah. That's what happens, yeah. Yeah. Mike, Bigfoot. <laughs> okay. I'm just reading some of the questions they Esau. Wanted. Huh? Esau. Esau. Esau was Bigfoot? Esau. Whoa! Well, wait, wait. Think of it this way: we a long time ago, right? <laughs> long time ago, it was pretty clear you had you had a red hair, hairy individual, right? Yeah. Covered with, and and his kind went out in the wilderness, and everybody else was afraid of these guys. They come riding through. Everybody was afraid, yeah, right? You're right. Well, it well it just so happens historically. Uh, they go back and that race of people, these guys went and found more guys like them, I guess. And they continue to do that. Right. So I, I don't necessarily believe in Bigfoot like most people do. Right. right? right. Because um, actually it's, it's even the military is given a caution when they go out and training and, 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 and certain places. What about they're the told not to engage with these, well, in the USA, when they're going out for training, right? Yeah. If they go in a mountainous region like the 10th Mountain Division, they're told not to engage with with those things you see out there. 
right? Do not engage. My, my I don't son. believe it's some big monkey. Right. No, 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 no. I simply believe that we have a few breakaway type societies in the earth that are smart enough to stay away from us. I, I can't subscribe to the UFO thing with the Bigfoot, this, that, and the other, because I have no knowledge of the connection between the two. But big, large people, you better believe it. You had, you better believe it. You know, my son was in the war, of course, and he fought in Kandahar. And he said uh, and he was out in an outpost out there in Kandahar, Providence. And dangerous, of course, you know. And he said one night um, a, a group of a platoon of Canadians that had been out there came and came to their outpost where the Americans were and then was going to spend a few days with the Americans to refresh a little bit, to have something good to eat and what have you. But when these guys came, he said they, they were scared to death. And he said yep. they were literally scared to death. And they started asking, what, what, why, what, what happened that you're so fearful? And they said, we seen, we seen what looked Giant. like an eight or nine foot man, yeah. red hair. Yep. But he, he had the ability. He jumped from rock to rock, mountain around, almost like yep. a cat. It yep. scared them to death. And, and, yep. and so, uh, so there's something to that. I mean, Mike, is there something to that? It is more real. Uh, than anyone would like to say, right? But listen, there, there's a, there's a, it's almost like a covenant between humanity, the Father, and those things, right? Okay. Those things cannot, at this moment in time, they cannot breach. Uh, sort of like a protective command over humanity. Mm. But they know there's a time coming when they will be able to do whatever they want to with any human being. That day is coming. That day is coming. And nothing will be holding anything like that back. Nothing. Right? That's why they still find, uh, you know, these digs deep down in the earth, like two-ton axes, right? Yeah. 40-inch, the 40-inch long sandals. Um, <laughs> I think one was three and a half feet long. Another was, uh, what was it? Um, uh, was a 56 inches. How do you have a sandal what? with a toe print, a toe print in there, right? I mean, this sandal was wore out. Uh, Grand Canyons, same thing. There's a cache of finds that were in the Grand Canyon that have been sealed. They are kept. They they have big rings that are there that are at least they have one ring that's 22 inches in diameter. A ring. A, ring, a ring like it's you would wear on your. We're talking. Yeah. How do how do they know it's a ring? Because they found the uh, the little bracelet that, like the Egyptians wore. Yeah. The same thing was found with it. That thing is humongous. They have knives, right? A knife that is about uh, four and a half feet long with a handle was worn in. The handle was worn. You can tell skin was on it on that leather that hide because it's deeply worn. So they have things like that, but you can't show people that for real because who would go outside then no, I, I, people would start dreaming up every type of story they can imagine right, right. And at that point they're not going to hear truth they're not going to listen to a truth they're going to make up their we own shouldn't truth. be shocked by this because king og had a bed that was 18 foot long and six foot wide that's yeah. in the bible yeah. king og and, and i told you i told you a story past what happened to me one time tell, tell, I, I can't can't tell you where but i went in a bathroom Okay. I thought. Oh, yeah, you told right? us. I remember this. Yeah, tell us. Right. Tell us. Yeah, urinals and were. The urinals <laughs> were, were up there, right there, a little over my head. Thir There's no way in the world. There's no way. That, look, that had to be I know a what huge, I to, That had so. to be a huge guy. Huge. Yeah, you I know, remember you, I you, know, remember you that telling was, me that. That was one of the first times, Pastor Paul. That was one of the first times I was shaking in my boots. I was. Can't tell us I where you were at when you saw that. Can't tell us where you're yeah. at. Yeah. But I'm telling you now, something, something. Uh, there are different things here on in this place. I, I just thank God for the separation from it. Thank the Lord for that. Well, the, yeah. there's creatures in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and they're they're there. They're there. I don't know where they're at. I don't know. I know. I'm I'm not looking for them. I'm looking for another place. It ain't there. I'm going this way. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and if I run into some big guys up there, I'm going to be all right with them because they're on they're the good guys, okay? So 
Oh, Mike, you are amazing. All right. Well, <laughs> um, any well, what are we going to be talking about next week? Uh, this look, the webinar is two weeks away. Uh, I, you know, we'll be we'll be filming you and find out what you're going to talk about here with the uh, with all these apocalyptic signs. Can you give us a clue what we might talk about next week? Well, we one of the one of the uh, gravest things, Pastor. Well, we have a problem in the USA and in Europe, of course. But I, I suspect we're about to see a, a very different constellation. I think that's going to change the minds of a lot of people. Wait, you're talking in the in the sky, the stars? Oh yeah, oh yeah. A brand new constellation. Amateur astronomers are going to find it. People will see it, but they won't really notice it until somebody brings it, brings the whole thing out. But the question is going to be, how in the how in the world can we all of a sudden see a brand new constellation, right? Wow. Some sort of constellation. Where did it come from? Or how does that work? How does that how is that even possible? Right. Would be my question. If if uh if I saw something like that, I'd be like, that that's impossible. That can't work that way, right? Based on what we know of the heavens. That can't work that way. So there's some wild things coming like that that will not be easily explainable. They will not be easily explainable. It's kind of interesting but, that you're bringing this up. Uh Mike uh, a BP Earth Watch in the webinar is going to be talking about something that he has discovered and found that uh, is uh, going to be quite hard for people to grasp. I'm wondering what that is. He hasn't told me exactly. Um, and you're going to, uh, maybe you'll explain some more about this constellation thing by the time you know, the webinar is two weeks out. Maybe, maybe you'll be able to share something about that. I don't know. We'll certainly have some, some things to share. Safety is going to be a big deal this year. Safety and, and, uh, and really keeping your cool throughout much of the chaos. Mike. It will become bitter. It'll become bitter. Chaos, bitter. Got to keep your cool. It's going to be trying. It's going to be tough. I understand. We're, we're, we're trying to prepare everybody right now for what's coming. Mike, thank you so much for coming on and being with us tonight. It's been a it's been a joy, really, and it's been very interesting. I my mind I'll be back studying all this stuff you said and trying to figure out where in the world and what in the world you're talking about. Half of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Paul. All right. Thank you, brother, for being with us tonight. I really appreciate it. God bless you, Pastor Paul. It's always an honor. The honor's mine, brother. God bless. Thank you. All right.